Alright guys, we are going to be doing Python. As you can see, I have a little bit of experience with it. Um, I've had some coursework. I had one course of Python, and that's why it's kind of partially done. I got gave myself a little bit of a briefer on it. Um, so we're just going to start fresh, because I haven't touched it in a while. And at the end of this, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, at the end of the course, rather. The course I took, our final project, was we made a game out of Python using the Pygame library. So what I'm going to start doing is when we finish this Python, every week I'm going to upload a video showing how to do a simple thing using the Pygame library because uh, that way we can get some hands-on stuff with our own labs and um, I can get some source code for myself for potential projects that I can show to employers and stuff like that, even though it's just going to be a game. We'll decide on the game, and maybe I'll do a poll or something. Um, but, you know, let's get started. We're in Python syntax. And I'll have to reset the code as we go. So, ready to learn Python? Click Save and Submit Code Done. So, uh, it looks like a print statement. It's just straight up print, and then followed by, by the quotes. And if I remember with Python... They are very, like, the I, I believe that you have to space everything perfectly. Or I could be thinking PHP, but anyhow. So we're going to set the variable, my underscore variable, so it doesn't look like we need to use quotes or anything here, or semicolons. Save and submit. So we have a my variable. That's how you set the variables, it looks like. And it's just going to automatically be set to an integer when we uh, give it an integer value. So same thing here, my underscore int equals seven. Uh, my underscore float equals 1.23. And if you're not familiar with what a float is, it's just a number with a decimal place, so 1.23, for example, in this case. And then my underscore bool, we're gonna set that to true. And, oh, capital true. Uh, make sure your boolean's capitalized. Bam, good to go here. So try it and see. Change the value of my int from seven to three in the editor. In the editor, rather. So we have three. We're going to reset that to three. And so now it's going to override it because we've changed the value of it, and it's going to print out three. Cool. So let's take a look at this and see what's going on here. So it looks like we have a def, which is our function, or our method, uh, called spam. We're going to say eggs is equal to 12. Return eggs. Then we want to print spam. So we should get 12. File Python indentation error. You should see an error message. Okay, so you see right here it says we should see it, so continue on. So properly indent the code with four spaces before eggs and line two. So it looks like these need to be indented. So one tab, you can just select it and tab. And now because it's indented, it should work properly. And you can see right here, we now it works properly because we have 12. So Python is very uh, syntax and indentation sensitive. It's going to reset this. So we're going to create a variable called spam, and we're going to set it equal to true. And then we're going to create a variable called eggs, and we're going to set that equal to false. All right. So reset code. So the comment uh, is pretty simple. It's just pound. This is for single line comments, I believe. I don't. I don't remember uh, what the multi line is. So we'll say this is a comment. Period. So if we want to do multi-line comments, it looks like we use a couple brackets. So you're going to need six in total. And we're going to say this is a multi-line comment. Let's clean that up a little bit. This is a multi-line comment. Bam. So when we save and submit, there we go. It looks like our code is working very nicely. So um, pound and then the triple 
uh, parentheses. So let's go ahead and reset this. So now we're going to set the variable count to the equal to sum of two numbers. So if you're familiar with any sort of coding at all, this should be very simple. So let's just do 723 plus 7. I don't know why. And we should get 730, and we're good to go. Uh, we can do the same things for multiplication. So in this case, we want 100 eggs, and we don't want to do uh, 10 times 10. We want to do to the power. So this would be multiplication, but to the power, we want it like that. So 10 to the power of 2, and we should get a return of 100. And use module set spam equal to 1. You can use any two numbers. I'll leave a remainder one to do this. So modulo is basically what number say you divide 3 by 2 uh, you're going to have a remainder of 1 and your modulo will be 1 so 3 divided by 3 is going to be 0 because there's no remainder so we want a remainder so we're going to do 3 modulo 2 uh, let's do 10 modulo 9 so we're going to have a remainder of 1 and there we go so just a quick review it looks like write a single line comment, so that's just the hashtag or pound or ampersand. If I said that right, it's been a while since I used that. Uh, millennials, kids call this the hashtag comment. Uh, what else? All right, we want to set a variable of Monty equal to true, and we want to set a na another variable Python equal to 1.234 and then we want to set a third variable equal to python squared so we want monty underscore python equal to one point or equal to python to the second power and we should be good to go and that was our first quick introduction to the python syntax um, up next, it looks like we're going to be doing a tip calculator. So you have for, uh, that to look forward to. It looks like it's only five sections, so it's pretty quick. The overall course is about 13. But I'll see you in the next video for the tip calculator. And uh, as always, constructive criticism is always... <laughs>